He's proud to be with you. Amen? Yes, there's the same principles that apply for everyone, but in the detail of each one of these Beatitudes, I believe God wants to speak in creative ways to each one of you. Because it can be the same sentence, but to you he said something different. To you he said something different. Not theology-wise, but about the detail. So the unique, unique Sermon on the Mount, unique message that your Master has for you. May God help you to see that and to work with that. Amen. We see blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We spoke about that. The poor in spirit, those who have the guts to be honest and to be humble. Humility and honesty. Let's say humility and honesty. Humility and honesty. It's right there in your Bible if you don't have it there. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So, if I understand how to be humble, how to, from humility and, 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 no, sorry, from honesty and humility, yes. If I understand that as pure, as genuine, then I can come, not to moan, but to mourn in the context of, with brokenness and true repentance. That's not saying I'm sorry, that's, the changing of my ways, of my thinking, of my desires, of the way that I give myself. May God help us with that. They shall be comforted. That means they will not just be accepted, they will be healed. They will be healed from the inside out. That's to be comforted in that context. The third one, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Inherit the earth. You will see your portion. You will see your destiny. You will embrace your destiny. Not with, not with arrogance. Why? Because the previous foundations, you took it to heart and you applied it in your life. So therefore, meekness that has an intensity around I'm teachable, I'm flexible, and I'm teachable. If God says seven times around the city, Joshua, you've never heard about that. That sounds freaky. But with that voice, you just realized, but this must be God. Therefore, I will be flexible, I will be teachable, and I will do the seven times around Jericho. And then the breakthrough will be there. And for every next step, yes, breakthrough upon breakthrough. Not because I stand in faith, first of all, but because I'm teachable. There's a meekness in me. To hear his voice, and I have a desire not to follow my own ways, but to follow him. Because he... My master has the best strategy for every situation. Amen? Let's say my master has the best strategy in every situation. Great. Based on this, these three principles, the next one. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for a right standing. Hunger. Hunger for what? For the word of God. Luke 4, 4, Matthew 4, 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but from every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, happy, fortunate, to be envied are you. Hello? If you understand that, how you can be, have a hunger for his word. It's not just there. Many times, maybe me and you, we don't have that hunger for the word, that major desire to get into the word. Look at the first three principles in your life. Look at those first three principles. Make sure it's there. It's there as a foundation. Then you will see there will be a hunger for his word. There will be a thirst for more of him, the living water. A thirst for more of the Holy Spirit, a hunger for more of the word of God. Blessed are you. You will be filled. You will be satisfied. Because the word will bring forth in your life what needs to be brought forth. Amen? You with me? But we, so many times we have a hunger for the story. Hunger for finding out what's happening there. Hunger for all the different issues. Hunger for my opinion. Make sure. Where is the hunger that you want? Because I can stand. I have a righteousness. I have a right to my own opinion. Yes, you have a right to your own opinion. But choose to give it up because you have a hunger for his opinion. You have a hunger for his word. You have a hunger for his opinion in what he is saying about things happening around you and in you. Is that true? 
Must I speak like this? Hopefully not. David, are you listening? Okay. Good. Next one. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Not the people that say, oh, shame. No. Not a handout. Merciful those who can give practical help to others, but in the name of the Lord. Help in a practical way, in such a way that people can say, God help me. God help me through Adam, or God help me through Niku, but God help me. It was not just Niku helping me. God help me. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are those who live according to these principles because come to number five, they will be merciful with the strength that God is giving them, with the power they will serve that is from him so that they will not grow weary because more and more of his strength is revealed in and through me and you. Because they will receive mercy. They will receive practical help from God. From others also, yes, but it will be in Christ. You will see how God will help you in so many ways. But to be merciful to others is not a manipulation trick, but it's a heart attitude that I want to give my life. I want to give my life because he has given his life to me. But even though he gave his life to you, it will mean nothing if you don't understand how to, with him, give your life to others. Amen? Amen. You're more loud when you play pool and all those other stuff, hey? Can you believe that? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I can see God with my eyes. So many people, the multitudes, they saw God. They saw the Son of God, Jesus Christ. But no purity of heart came at all. Because they had to see with spiritual eyes. They had to see with their hearts. You know how to see with your heart when there's judgment or when there's bitterness or when there's offense. Offense in, you, in your heart will let you see through your eyes very free, freaky things. Very freaky things. Religion in your heart will make you see a lot of rubbish. Compromise in your heart. Double-heartedness will make you see things in various different ways. Hello? But I can choose to apply all these principles in such a way, get the Word of God in my heart, so that what? So that what? I will see what God is seeing. God, help me to see what you are seeing. My heart feels I want to do this, but I'm seeing through the Word what God is seeing. And I'm saying what he is seeing. I keep with what he is seeing and my heart will turn. The more I just keep with what he is seeing, what he is saying. Are you with me? People can say, I hear what you say. Or people can say, I see what you are saying. I see what you are saying is so much more. I can see what you are saying. Let it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let it be so. The next one. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Peacemakers with a ministry of reconciliation. You've worked through it, I know. Peacemakers, not ceasefire. Peacemakers, those who stand with stature so that heaven and earth can unite. Because they know the Father's heart. Sons know the Father's heart. You became a child of God when you gave your life to Christ. Time is going to pass, and you're going to grow. If you like it or not, you're not going to stay a child, a little child. Like in every situation, you are growing. But if you don't grow in Christ to become a son of God, you will become childish. Like we said many times, a child can do certain things, but if that child is 20 years old and he do the same things, that's very childish. And it's a shame. Therefore, I need to grow in Christ. Less of me, more of him. I need to grow in Christ. Okay. I have a beautiful face, Franzel. You can just Okay. Are you with me? So you have the ministry of reconciliation. Let's walk with that. 
Let's not walk so that you and you will have the same opinion and the whole opinion is not even from God. No. What is God saying about me and you? What is he saying about you and him? May God help you. May God help me. So if I understand that, then I'm building his kingdom. I understand how to build his kingdom as sons of God. Now then we come to the last two points for today. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Must we pray for persecution because then you will be blessed? Anybody? No. But you don't want to be blessed? No, you don't want to be blessed. At this point, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for your stature sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. For the sake of your stature, persecution. Where? The first persecution is your flesh. Your flesh is giving you a persecution. It's persecuting whatever is in your spirit. There's a war. Persecution is something that stands against what is there because it hates what he sees. Your flesh is not impressed with what God is doing in your life. And if you can deal with the persecution from your flesh and your own opinions and your own, all that other khwaras and mamparas, if you can deal with that, with those rubbish, excellent, for righteousness sake. For the sake of you to become more stable, more stable, the flesh that persecutes you, you are aware of your flesh. And Romans 8 talk about the spirit against Spirit of God against the flesh. The one standing against the other one. The one who is in the flesh ignores the spirit. The one who is in the spirit ignores the flesh. It's two enemies. So your flesh will persecute that what is from God in your life like nothing else. Like nothing else. But you can deal with it for righteousness sake. In the other translations, it's talking about righteousness in the name of Christ, in the name of Jesus, for my name's sake, in my name, so that your, the name of Christ will not be a swear word, but it is backed by stature from a man who fears God, who has respect for Christ, that when the name of Jesus comes forth through that man, the devil needs to pay attention. Are you with me? Because what is coming forth is from a place of stature. Jesus. And things are shaken in the spirit. But the one that, we, that is not backed with stature, that don't understand these principles, how to be blessed from heaven, from the heart of the Father, as Jesus explains it in the Sermon on the Mount. The ones that are not blessed in such a way, they can use the name of Christ in a swear word. It will just bring more curse into their lives. It will just be more a curse, more a curse, more a curse of arrogance, of rebellion. And stature in that demonic, that specific demonic force will be, will be built so that you are standing strong in opinion. You are standing strong in the temptation. You are standing strong in lust. You are standing strong. You are standing strong in deception. More and more and more you will stand strong in that. But if you can identify your enemy and it comes against you, blessed are you for the sake of your stature, for righteousness sake. What are we talking about? The word of God says you will reign with Christ as kings and priests forever, 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 forever. He is the king of all kings. For your, you to be a king, you need to ra be raised up in stature. Because when a king speaks, something happens. Bottom line. When a king speaks, something is happening. And something will happen. Finish. Are you with me? So that I'm, I'm challenging you with, with the authority that you have in the spirit. Authority because you're a king. And you will reign with Christ forever as kings and priests. Revelation talks about that very intensely. May God help you 
that your emotions and your circumstances will not be your king. Your offenses, your hurt, your past will not be your king. But you will be a king in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let it be so in Jesus' name. The next one. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. For my sake. For my sake. What are we talking about? Anybody that needs to be blessed, let them talk behind your back. Okay. Anybody that needs to be blessed, let them speak about you in an unfair way because they're lying about you. Oh, blessed are you. Because you have an opportunity on earth that you will never for eternity in heaven will have. Ever, 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 ever. You have an opportunity on earth when they do that. A major opportunity that you will never have. You, do, you won't believe it, but in heaven they will not talk about, about you in a false way. They will not, but Skinner, they will not gossip. No, that's not Skinner from you. They will not gossip. They will not break you down. They will not accuse you falsely. They will not, nothing of that will happen in heaven. So blessed are you if it happens on earth, because then you will have an opportunity to worship me in spite of, like we said. Everybody say, in spite of, I will worship you. That quality of worship, you will have only that opportunity on earth. So blessed are you, blessed are you if you understand that. That when you come in the situation, it's not just standing with stature against that in the name of Jesus. But I have the opportunity. Lord, in spite of what I feel, I'm tired, I'm fed up, I feel offended, I feel hurt. I feel all this different stuff. But still I will honor you. Still I will worship you. I will not get a moan and a groan and a, and a childish offense and things in my heart that is not from you. No. Let your fire fall on that rubbish. Amen? But I will become a worshiper. I will become a worshiper in spirit and truth. In spirit and based on the facts of what is happening to me. According to that, I will worship. No, 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 no. Truth will set you free above the facts. Truth will give you perspective so that you can have the capacity to worship your God in spite of what you feel. So when at that moment you feel fed up, you say, God, I worship you. I love you. But you don't feel that. So what? It's in your spirit. But you are so aware of the emotion in your soul. Just ignore that. Or just humiliate that thing. Humiliate that thing. Because that thing wants to humiliate, or humiliate you. Don't let it humiliate you. You go and humiliate this thing. Who are you? This rubbish emotion, I'm not like that. I will not accept it anymore. And your head says, you are crazy, man. This is for real. This is what you feel. No, what is for real is what is from heaven in your spirit. That is for real. The rest must go. The rest must go. Because I will worship him in, spu in purity. My worship will be beautiful. And many times in the midst of whatever you go through, there's the most pure, beautiful worship that you can give him. You with me? So the enemy come against you with all the rubbish to confuse you and to put you down and bring you in depression and bring you in a lot of things, into a lot of rubbish. And then you bow down and you worship the Lord. That's not part of the plan. <laughs> all those devils coming against you say, that's not part of our plan. Why is he doing that? That's not logical. That guy is supposed just to fall in the prison and swear and do this and give everybody attitude and not work with, not be teachable and just doing his own thing and go and sit and feel sorry for himself and justify himself. And he's supposed to do that according to our strategy. Now we come against him and then he worships the Lord. Every time we come with the rubbish against him, then he worships the Lord. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Says all the devil is assigned to make your life miserable. No. But how will you get to that point? Work through these principles. It's not clickety-click and everything just happened like that. No, no, no. Work through these principles. 
and you will be free to live that type of lifestyle more and more and more. Worship. That's about the one that you focus on the most. You focus on your hurt, your past, your opinion, the way that's the thing that you worship, not God. In spite of that, I focus on Him and I will worship Him. In spite of this, I will worship Him. You, you turn your focus away from there's a reality, and the reality is not gone, it's still, it's still there. But you believe something that's above all of that. Are you with me? What is making that of you? A priest. You will rule with Christ as kings and priests. So the first one was kings in the name of Christ with stature. And for righteousness sake. You have the right to stand here in the name of heaven. Second one. To bow down, not to stand with stature, but to bow down before him, heal him alone. Not to bow down before all the rubbish, the circumstances and things. But you will bow before him and before him alone. With all your success or all your whatever you're going through, you will bow before him alone. Because why? You're a priest forever. Under the authority of the high priest. The high priest Jesus Christ, you're a priest. The king of kings, you're a king. At the end of the day, those two points, Christ come and he lay that foundation further. It's this. But before that, look at these seven other principles. Apply it in your life. Make it real. Make it a reality. Are you with me? Then he says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Show me exceedingly glad. Anybody? Okay, the rest, the religion came upon you. <laughs> Immediate. Go and practice it there alone in the field, on the farm, you know, somewhere. Where you don't have to be self-conscious, but where you can be God-conscious. Amen. God will help us. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward. Your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. What is he saying? You can rejoice and be glad because you have a perspective beyond all of this. A prophetic perspective. Why? Two verses back, you're a king with a king of kings. Next verse, you're a priest with a high priest. Next verse, you're like a prophet. You have a prophetic perspective. I know you write all these things down. You have a prophetic perspective above what you go through, above all the other things, in the name of Christ and for the sake of Christ. In the name of Christ, King, for the sake of Christ, Priest. I have a capacity to see beyond. It's not just I got a prophetic word and I'm encouraged by it. No, I have a perspective beyond what I go through now. And in that, because I can see beyond today, I can rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Am I rejoicing and being in my exceedingly glad state that I'm in? Is because God is excited about my future and I can see something about my future because I have a prophetic perspective. I am coming into that position. And as I'm coming into that place, my joy is forever. My joy is, has eternal value. There's something of my joy now that has the same quality of my joy that I will have in heaven when I'm there. When I'm there. The type of joy that I will have there, I have it now. Not the fullness, but I have some of that eternal quality of joy right now. Let it be so for your life that we will not just happy or sad or this or that according to our soul and every baboon can say amen because you can do whatever that baboon can do when you want to be happy when you want to be glad and your happiness and your gladness is all depending on your emotions what you're going through and you're a puppet on a string you're under that authority you are under that curse or that slavery of whatever is going on around you or what somebody is doing with you or for you or against you no, you are set free in the name of Christ. 
Work through these things. Work through what your master has given you. Jesus Christ, please. So that when you need to go in the valley, you have it with you. You have it with you. You came from the mountain. You have the stature. You have the authority from heaven. And when you come down into the valley, you can lead the people into destiny. And so it was with Moses. And so you can lead your life. You can, you can guide yourself. You can be a leader in yourself against your flesh. And then you can even lead your flesh so that you will, your flesh, like the word says, your flesh will cry out to the living God. And suddenly your flesh will also cry out to the living God. Because you are not controlled with a curse of opinion. Somebody told you something about he, what he did against that guy. Or what he said, whoa, is that how he handled that situation? Yo, and that thing has the final authority above the word of God. That thing has more authority than God's word. And you will be shaken and you will justify it. You will be shaken by running into a lot of rubbish. And believe a lot of deception and a lot of rubbish. That's not God's word for you. I challenge you today, my brother and my sister, to be kings and priests with a prophetic perspective about your future so that you can rejoice and be glad about your destiny, about your future, and so for the nations even so. Let the church rise up and be excitingly glad and rejoice because there's an excellent future laying ahead even in this season. Father, come and do that in our lives, please, through your Holy Spirit. I pray for every man, every woman here, Lord, that they will take the challenge to work through these principles, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, so that each one of us can come into the place to walk with stature above our circumstances. Our circumstances and our emotions will not be our stature. Our opinions will not be our stature. Our personality will not be the stature in our lives. No, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But as we grow in you, Lord, and as we are shaken by the flesh that persecuting us, Lord, no. Then we will realize what is from you and what is not from you. And we will build more accurately even tomorrow. And so we will be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. But for your name's sake as priests also. Thank you for opportunities even though our flesh does not like that at all. But God, help us to embrace every opportunity to say, I will worship you in spite of whatever. Because you are my God and you alone I will serve. That's our decisions through the blood of Christ in the name of Jesus. Where there is no condemnation, even for yesterday, for whatever happened. But through the blood of Christ, we have boldness to come to your throne of grace. To be not just accepted but to take, be taken higher and higher and higher into your dream. Let it be so for us, Lord, so that our, our joy can become full, so that we can rejoice and be exceedingly glad because we know what is laying ahead. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. As all say, amen, amen. amen. Let it be so.